Welcome back everyone, and if you had watched my PS2 retrospective video a while back, you'll know that the PS2 was the most sold and popular gaming console of all time. Having sold over 155 million units worldwide since its release in 2000. For those of you around my age who grew up playing the PS2 and still love it to this day, and wish you could play your old games from your childhood, then do I have great news for you. A great team of folks banded together to create an open source PS2 emulator program where you can play all your old favorite PS2 games. Enter PCSX2. A simple download and install and you'll be playing your old games in no time. Let me show you how to do it. Firstly, if you have a decent modern PC, it will run the program and all the games just fine. Even if you have a decent laptop, you can run the program and the games just fine as well. So go onto their website, PCSX2.net, and download the latest nightly version, and just follow the wizard to install it. But first, if you are running Windows, which I'm sure most of you are, to download the program and run it, you will need to go to 7zip.org. Download that and install 7zip so you can run the PS2 program. So, Download the PCSX2 program with 7-Zip, then right-click on the PCSX2 file like this, go up to 7-Zip, and then extract here. The files will spill out like this. Then select the program file, and it should open like this. Then just follow the wizard to install. However, you will have to have a BIOS for the program to work. Where is this BIOS and how do I obtain it? I'm so glad you asked. You can either rip it from your PS2 by a USB stick, or you can simply download a few files, <coughs> legally of course, and you'll be off to the races. So let's go get that second one and get started. So to begin, we'll be going to three different websites to download certain files. The first one is the PS BIOS claim tool, which can be found on archive.org. The next one is actually the PS3 emulator program called RPCS3 on RPCS3.net. Finally, we need to go to the PlayStation website and download the PS3 system software. All links will be in the description below. So let's start with the PS BIOS claim tool. Go ahead and download the zip file. Next, go over to RPCS3 website and download the latest program for your operating system. Finally, we will return to the Sony website and download the PS3 update. Right click and save the file. You may have an error when downloading, especially on Chrome, but simply just click to keep the file here. Once those have finished, we are going to start with the batch file that we get from archive.org. It is a zip file, so you will have to extract them. Once it is finished extracting, you should see three files like these, depending on your operating system. Next, we must open up the PS3 program by extracting it as well. It is a 7-zip file, so feel free to use that. Once it is finished, go ahead and open the folder and look for the rpcs 3 execute file. Go ahead and open it and you'll see a greeting screen. Check the boxes and then continue. What you are seeing is the RPCS3 interface. However, not what we are looking for right now. So go up to the file and then install firmware. You should be prompted to search where you downloaded the PS3 system software file. Just open it up and let it do its thing. It should start compiling the PPU modules. Now once that is finished, go ahead and close that. We won't need it anymore. Next, we need to extract the BIOS. So go back up to your downloads folder and look for two BIOS claim files to extract the BIOS from the PS3 program. Simply grab those files and drag them into the PS3 program folder.
then click on the batch file. You may get an error depending on what version of Windows you're using. If this happens, click on more info and then run anyway. Give it some time to work through all its Windows issues. Once it's finished, it should say that the BIOS has been extracted. And to press any key to continue. Now, if you look back in the PS3 folder, you should have two separate BIOS files labeled PS3, PS1 BIOS, and PS3, PS2 BIOS. Just grab both of them and drag them onto your desktop. Now, pull up your PCSX2 program and go up to the settings and then down to BIOS. Then at the top, there should be a browse button. Go to the desktop where you have the BIOS files and select the folder. Then you should have your BIOS files pulled into the program. Now, since we are using the PS2 program, you'll need to select the PS2 MU BIOS. Now, make sure you select the fast boot box because that basically bypasses the PS2 boot up screen that we all know and love. Go ahead and close out of that and you are good to go, folks. There are tons of settings that you could change and make the games look even more amazing like widescreen options and boosting the quality from 480p all the way up to 1080p or higher. However, any higher it, and it might rip the game apart as you can see here in my King Kong game that I'm rendering at 4K. If you push the settings higher than the game is capable of, it will screw up the rendering and most likely crash the game. Now, what about controllers? How can we play our favorite games without a controller? Well, here's the cool part. You can use just about any controller you want as long as you either have a USB adapter connection for it to plug into your computer or a wireless Bluetooth controller. When I first got started, I was under the impression that I had to use actual PS2 controllers. Thankfully, that's not the case. I spoke with a few of the developers over on their Discord about what I could use, and they said any controller will work. That feature is built into the software. So basically either plug in your controller or turn on Bluetooth and connect and go up to the settings and then down to controllers and it should pop up automatically. Once you have all that set up and running, next is getting your games installed. There are many ways to get your PS2 games installed on your computer. You can either do it the illegal way and find ROMs on the internet and download them, or you can do it the legal way by ripping them from the discs themselves. If you have an older computer that still has a DVD drive in it, like this old one of my dad's, you can simply put them into the DVD drive and use the program image to burn a copy of the disc to your local drive. Or, if you still have your old fat PS2, you can install a hard drive directly into the back of the system with lots of other tools which can get kind of expensive and also very involved. Whichever you choose, I'll leave the resources in the description to help guide you. Once you have your games on your computer, simply go up to settings and then down to game list and select the folder where you have stored your games. They should load in just like this. After that, you should be free to start enjoying your favorite games just like old times. The program will prompt you to set up your memory cards, but it will walk you through that. If you guys or gals have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I'll answer them as best I can. Also, let me know what your favorite PS2 games were and your favorite memory playing them. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go relive my childhood.